of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into... The Zack Moonshine Show. Crank it the fuck up, motherfucker. Fucker, 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 fucker.
hosted by the sexiest motherfucker on the planet, DJ Zach from Brutal Death Boat. <laughs> Motherfucking shit, motherfuckers. I'm Zach Moonshine. You're listening to the motherfucking Zach Moonshine Show live right here on Metal Devastation motherfucking radio. It's Friday night, motherfuckers, and uh, you know what? It is not just any old Friday night. No, 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 no. It is a very special fucking Friday night. (laughs) It's fucking Friday night, man. (laughs) It's fucking Friday night, dude. Hey, you know what? Every fucking Friday night is badass because we finally made it, you know? Every week is fucking crazy. You never know what's going to happen, and uh, the shit fucking goes fucking nuts, and we make it to this fucking pinnacle, magical moment of total devastation, and we are uh, we're here to celebrate it, man. And I'm very excited about tonight. I know you guys are, too. And I uh, just want to give a big shout-out to everybody across the fucking world right now that's tuned in. Supporting the show, doing what you do, man. We thank you so much. We could not do this without you. And uh, you guys, you guys are the fucking, you're the fucking rock that fucking makes this fucking shit rock, dude. 
Big shout out to all the record labels, all the promoters, all the magazines, all the DJs, all the podcasters, all the bands, all the listeners, and all the crazy people in the chat room that are hanging out with us. We got a very special uh, live interview coming up at the top of the hour with Brooke Burgess. We'll be talking about his new record, Dad Bod, which uh, it's it's pretty amazing, man. Just stay tuned and you, you're going to find out all about it. It's going to be happening at the top of the hour live. If you have any questions, get in the chat room at MetalDevastationRadio.com and uh, let me know what you want to say. Um, we kick things off with some classic Metallica Master of Fucking Puppets. Why? Because everybody across the fucking goddamn world right now is talking about Master of Puppets. Why? Because of Stranger Things, man. Yeah, I saw that scene, man. That fucking shit, that episode was fucking crazy, dude. It was cool as fuck, man. It's cool to see millions of people around the world talking about a song that is, uh, you know, like over 30 years old from my childhood. And it still fucking rocks today, man. It's still fucking badass. You know, all these years later. And it's fucking back in the charts, man. And I know a lot of people are like, yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit. Who cares about that stuff? Well, the thing is, man, that brings new people into metal that maybe never really heard about it, the kind of stuff before, you know. And they're going to check that out. And then next thing you know, they're going to check out Cannibal Corpse and Grave Huffer and fucking you, you name it, you know. And then they end up listening to Metal Devastation Radio, which is a fucking cool thing, man. Maybe they'll come to the fucking festival, Tennessee Metal Devastation Music Fest, man. I got to tell you guys, man, we got a lot of updates and uh, big announcements that have been happening about uh, the festival, man. This shit is fucking getting insane, dude. Uh, this week, we, we announced brand new sponsors. We got Lisa Atkins ph- Photography local from right here in jackson tennessee she also used to be our neighbor as a matter of fact but uh yeah she's a great photographer she does a lot of local shows she's uh in with all these all all these fucking shows and all the things that are happening around here in uh tennessee in our local area so it's definitely cool to uh to be able to help her and for her to help us and be at this at, at this uh celebration and it's just, it's definitely a cool thing, man. We also announced our brothers and sister from Metal Omania are fucking sponsoring the fucking show, man. And they're gonna, uh, Chris Grant, fucking The Crypt and Scully are both gonna be at the festival hanging out. And they're, I mean, I'm so fucking excited to meet these guys, man. I never fucking met them before. We've been talking forever online, though. Huge supporters them supporting us us supporting them just i mean it's just it's an amazing thing it's a beautiful fucking thing and uh, i cannot wait to uh to see them out there man we've also got more grot magazine which is a local fucking magazine that does horror uh movies and fucking death metal all kinds of obscure fucking shit man they're fucking sponsoring the show they're going to be out there uh there's so many i mean and and the amount of vendors too, man. Where we've got vendors coming out of the fucking woodwork, man. That are fucking lined up, dude. There's gonna be so much fucking fucking shit at this fucking festival. <laughs> it's fucking insane, man. Like you don't even literally, you don't even have to actually be a fan of metal for this to be worth your fucking dollar to go to. I'm talking about we got fucking cookies by Cron. They're gonna be out there baking cookies for everybody. We got Buck's Craft B- Barbecue. They're going to be out there bringing the fucking briskets and shit. We got uh, the Sweet Spot, which is a vegan fucking cake fucking bakery right here in town, man. And I'm telling you what, I'm not vegan. Even I like their shit, dude. It's that fucking good, man. You cannot tell, man. It's amazing, dude. They're going to be out there. Uh, Smith Oddities, they're another one, man. They're going to be out there selling fucking dead shit. Fucking, they, they fucking collect... Uh, fucking roadkill and fucking weird different things and they fucking turn it into art they're gonna be out there man uh succubus succubacy art is also gonna be out there doing custom awesome paintings for everybody and shit man it's fucking insane dude like we got a lot more stuff to be uh to be announced pretty soon but yeah man tennessee metal devastation music fest 13 fucking bands dude 
all fucking day out at the lake, man. Open air, dude. All kinds of fucking merchants are going to be out there fucking selling shit. All kinds of food, all kinds of metal, all kinds of people. And there's a lake there, man. You know, who knows what the fuck is going to be fucking... uh, Are they going to let us fucking fish while we're fucking... (laughs) People going to be fishing? I don't know, man. I don't know, but... It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. I mean, I cannot fucking wait to uh see everybody out there, man. It's going to be insane, man. It's going to be uh it's going to be a historical fucking thing that I don't think has ever fucking happened around here, man. It's probably going to be the biggest, most badass, brutal, fucking devastating thing that has ever happened in West Tennessee. Period, man. Period. Anyway, with that being said, get out there, go buy your fucking tickets, get them online right now, just type in Google fucking Metal Devastation Music Fest Tennessee, you'll find them, dude, or go to my Facebook and you can see a million uh, different links fucking posted all over the fucking goddamn place, man, it's pretty simple, man. or you can come right here to the website and click the first link that you see on the front page that's, that's got the flyer right there for the with the bands and everything, that's all you gotta do, man. Get on there, get them fast, man, because pre-sale tickets, they're only 25 bucks. If you wait till uh, the day of, it's going to be 35 at the gate. So, you're saving 10 bucks right there automatic, man, you know? And you can do a lot with 10 bucks, you know? I mean, fuck. That's fucking a couple packs of cigarettes, fucking, you know, 12 pack of beer. <laughs> All kinds of shit, man. What am I saying? But anyway, you guys know the fucking thing. But, uh, man... Coming up, I got some brand fucking spanking new fucking music from Plague Years and Inhuman Condition. So crank it the fuck up. You guys know the drill. Put your speakers in your windows. Put them in your front lawns. Put them in your neighbor's driveway. If you're living in the basement, duct tape your speakers to the ceiling. If you're in the attic, put your speakers in the floor. Do whatever you can. Make everybody around you fucking hear this shit. If you don't see U-Haul trucks everywhere tomorrow, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but... You ain't cranking it up loud enough like we are, man. I'm serious. Crank this fucking shit up. This is Play Gears with Suffer.
listen to Metal Devastation Radio. What's up? This is Jeremy Kling from Inhuman Condition, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. 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 (laughs) Like a pro, man.
fucking thanks. the fuck is going on man oh man a whole hell of a lot man a whole <laughs> hell of a lot with all good stuff man all, all great stuff and i just want to let you know uh i peeked outside um people are actually 
moving out right now as we speak <laughs> because it's being so loud. Yeah. And for a moment there, Cat looked like Marty in Back to the Future when I cranked up the monitors in the studio when he hit that big note, you know, and it blew Doc's speaker apart. Great moment right here, man. Love it. Always love talking to you, brother. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah, dude. It is a Seth. From Seth. the totally overrated sellouts. Seth, what the fuck are you doing, man? Listening to the best fucking radio show ever. <laughs> Me- Metal Devastation Radio! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Men on a mission, surgical precision, dropping hot bombs and we generating fission. Snick, snack, snack, I'm the paper, you're the rock. Together make the scissors and we cutting through the lock. Unchained from the days I was so restrained. Now it's all gone, but look what I gained, cause I paid the piper. Cupid was a sniper, shoots and he scores, then you bit me like a viper. Hit my veins like a train full of locomotion. Steam in my step with your magic potion. Flipped all my strips to a tale of devotion. You're the needle in my stack, the pearl in my ocean, my friend. Let me say it once again. My friend. Well, I used to be a faker, silver tongue taker, 31 flavors for the big booty shaker with an up deep cup, triple A heartbreaker, never thought I would change till I met my maker, but I met you instead and I must contend, that every day before was only playing pretend, now the game is real and I don't want it to end, cause I'm playing it with you and you're my best friend, well I gotta say it loud, cause you're my best friend. Hesitate to put your hand in mine I will bear that weight Because you are my best mate You're great From your sense of style To your guts and your guile To the blinding light From your million dollar smile Number one fan till the day I die That's gonna be a while I hope yeah, my boy ain't hype, cause he's an archetype I am the statue of David, but he's packing pipe So to get through me, you better bend that knee And you will wait down there till he's right That's right, well let me say it again And I hope I don't offend Gonna shout it from the mountain top to get an amen Yeah, one edge blast, but this is doing it too Is that a man or a pain? No, it's Superman And we are best friends We're about to sing it loud Cause you're my best friend And you make me so damn proud
When the fires burn and the earth it churns and the swords are raised for war. Then plant them deep as the watchers sleep and abandon all you know of the blood and stones of a lover's bones cause you're reaping what you sow. Uh -huh. Through the veil of tears With the fang of the great cat's maw When the stars are right Let the clans unite And bequeath the black dog's claw Then you have but two of the devil's do And the magic should have failed With the blood and stones of a lover's bones Let you cleave the servant's tail Motherfucking shit, motherfuckers. That was fucking badass, dude. That was Brooke Burgess right there, man. Let's call him up right the fuck now and see what the fuck is going on in his world, man. Hello, mate. Hey, Brooke. How are you? <laughs> Dude, we are doing great, man. <laughs> you Thanks. are laughing with uh, far too much malicious intent. I am uh, suspicious no. of you intensely. No. <laughs> nothing to be, 
Nothing to be suspicious about at all, man. Hey, you are live right now on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation Radio. We just got done blasting a couple of your tracks. We played uh, Best Friend, and then we played Shadowland, and I got to tell you, man, oh. that, these tracks are yeah. just so fucking badass, dude. Oh, that, that's, I really, I am grateful for the warmth and support, man. It's uh, A lot of love went into them, and so it's nice to know they can be uh, loved by others, too. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. I can tell everybody uh, that's listening right now, all the people in the chat room, everybody's really enjoying it, man. Good, good fucking good stuff, man. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. So, so uh, tell us uh, seriously, man. Like, uh, like, what's going on in the world of Brooke Burgess? Like, what are you, what are you doing? I am. I am. Uh, you're. You're catching me at 4 a.m. in the Netherlands. That's where I'm based. Um, and um, let's see. Like, what in the world of Brooke Burgess? The origin story of the album was I was living in uh, Southeast Asia uh, with my with my young son and his German mom at a hotel there on a tiny island in Thailand. And uh, then the pandemic hit, and you know, work dried up, and the world worries seeped in. And I'm like, I want to do something to not only distract myself, but really like to lift the spirits of my young son is like you know what's going on daddy mm -hmm. basically and um you know i had made a lot of stuff in other mediums i had worked at like you know in video games i had written for electronic arts i had worked for warner brothers and universal i was consulting for all these different like entertainment companies over the years but one of my bucket list things to do was to you know do an album and i just didn't have like the, the spark the reason to do it and then all of a sudden i'm like well i have all these musician friends who can't tour um, we have the amazing technology of the internet to allow us to reach each other. Uh, I actually had, believe it or not, access to pretty decent production facilities just a boat ride away. And I'm like, it's now or never. And I had the inspiration because I had all that love for my boy and the songs were just coming to me. And, uh, you know, a year and a bit later, Oh, exactly. A year ago, uh, July 7th, like two days ago, uh, released the album to the world. And uh, it's been, you know, listened to and the videos have been watched because it's a 20 video project as well. The, it's It's been enjoyed by thousands upon thousands of people around the world the last year. And the response has been amazing. And I am utterly blessed. And my boy is, uh, is pretty tickled for as much as he can fathom at five years old. He's like, so you made that, Daddy? You singing that, Daddy? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And then... And, and then I get him involved in the shoots, and now he's a nice little pro rock star. So, it's uh, it's it's been it's been a blast and uh, a real learning experience, and just a reminder of the power of music, the way it can reach out to people. Man, man, I I can't believe it was a year ago that that was released. Like, fuck. Yep. Where did time yep. go, man? <laughs> it's it it was a blur it's yeah best friend came out july 7th 2021 and then every like two and a half to three weeks i was releasing like a new video and uh and that was the thing right i really wanted to have this as like a a, a music and video project kind of like telling this big narrative and to have it all tie together but all my feelings for him but also more importantly just this whole idea of being a dad it was you know, to do it late in life um, you know, most of my friends had kids in their 30s or their 20s or maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe in their early 40s. And here I was, you know, having a son at 47. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Stupid, I, I, but <laughs> I thought I waited a long time, man. You, <laughs> you got me on Dude, that. Dude, I, I resisted and resisted and resisted the call, but uh, it's, I, I, I can honestly say, uh, without any hint of, uh, you know all truth in my heart and in my voice it was worth every bit of pain every bit of growing pain every bit of transformation that kid just absolutely changed my life and that's why this was so easy to do you know uh, even when it was hard you know speaking of, of, of be becoming a parent at, a, at an older age you know I I can tell you man honestly I think that it was actually worth waiting the while because yeah. you know i so many of my friends growing up that that did it early on man i saw them struggle you know like and i'm not going to say that like you know that they didn't you know do what they could do or or didn't right. do anything right or anything but it's just i saw the struggle you know and i was always like man i'm just not ready yet and uh so exactly. i exactly i totally i totally feel you man 
Well, I think that it, with it comes not only the maturity, the, oh, I'm older now and I've lived more, but really your ego starts to dissolve as you get older. You realize you're not always going to get your way. You realize that mm. you get a lot of joy, or at least as you, most people mature, you realize you get more joy from serving others. And there's not much more intense service than serving <laughs> your child, right? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. They're number there one, man. They're number one. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I'd do anything for them. Well, uh, yeah, listening to this record, it's it's definitely evident. I mean, that's just it's it's a beautiful fucking thing, man. It's amazing, and I'm so uh, I'm so glad that we finally got you on here. I know we've been talking about doing this interview for I don't know, man. It feels like forever. Well, yeah, about at least actually, yeah, more than six months. Gosh, yeah, it's been it's since Shadowland was first featured, and that was like I think October. Yeah, that was Halloween last year. <laughs> so that's when we said maybe we should and uh now it's finally happening and um you're a, you're a cool ass dude man thanks man i appreciate it dude you're pretty cool yourself man oh uh, <laughs> look at this mutual <laughs> appreciation society what 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 other type of stuff do your listeners like to hear about is it all kumbaya on the metal show come on man <laughs> Hell yeah, man. It, you know what? I, let me ask you, dude, like some of your influences, man. You got to tell us, like, what kind of stuff do you listen to that 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 uh, helps you that helped you produce such an eclectic uh, album like this? Because every song is different, man. That's what's so cool about it. Well, it's cool, but I know, you know, a lot of a lot of kind of like traditional publishing types kind of like you can't do like a multi-genre oh, album, yeah. especially a double multi-genre album. And I'm like, well, but it's less about the genre and more about the story being told. Each song has a feeling and threads into the next. But yeah, I'm an eclectic guy with a you know, soup bowl full of taste. And I, the, here's the weird thing. I grew up in the 80s and most music sucked or at least they, at that time in North America the North American music sucked but there was some really cool stuff happening over in Britain right and 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 yeah so like there's a little bit of a new wave thing there was like talk talk and I guess like you know a little bit Duran Duran and whatever that stuff was happening but I was definitely influenced in my small town in Canada by you know old school rock so of course it was like you know Zeppelin and Floyd and and uh, and then you know my parents were listening to the Beatles and and that was all great but I feel like my taste didn't start to mature until it came about time and I know this might sound cliche but when when grunge hit and all of a sudden you have this like small window where it's you know Pearl Jam and Soundgarden and Nirvana and Alice in Chains and Mud Honey and all these mm -hmm. things I'm like whoa uh, this speaks to my you know this speaks to my uh, unexplainable rage of my <laughs> of my late teens early 20s this really works for me and um, and then Radiohead came along and I started to explore kind of different feelings and like you know how can a narrative unfold uh, within music because like you, know, you listen to OK Computer which is still an amazing album and it feels almost multi-genre on its own it's like a concept album and then I got older and then it became weirder and then it's like I, I love like Godspeed to Black Emperor and and these things that like really were more challenging and then and then you travel and as you travel you get influenced by world music but also you realize that everywhere you go there are certain types of music that appeal to everybody and i started to get into hip-hop uh which is strange but it's like you're going to you're going to central america or southeast asia or north africa and you're like wow there are a lot of people listening to hip-hop and not just in their own language and regional ways but also like you know very much they're listening to english hip-hop and i'm going what is it about this and i started to listen to like you know a bit more old school like uh, earlier than wu-tang but but like definitely like wu-tang appealed to me a lot um you know della soul appealed to me um you know old school beastie boys appealed to me um there was a cleverness there and uh, a kind of a spirit that smashed into me and made me like find my own rhythm of how i spoke and how i wrote things and you know as a writer especially when i'm writing dialogue or dialogue for voiceover it's about finding the rhythm of a character and that's something i learned to really appreciate about hip-hop too which is why the album is about a third hip-hop um yeah a lot of influences and i'm still garnering them i'm still gathering them it's uh it's a life journey and music's the best reflection of that that is really cool you, you mentioned the 90s and grunge and stuff like that and that automatically popped up a bunch of mm. stuff in my head when you when you said that i was thinking thinking back on that time in that era and yeah i totally see it now like with this music is definitely uh 
definitely harkens back to a lot of stuff like that, like Beck and and uh, yes, different 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 uh, artists like that during that time that were trying different things, and uh, yeah. What the hell happened? You know, like it used to seem like pe- it, people were open. You know, like s- as far as journalists, you you mentioned those guys. You know, and I know how yeah. they they are so uh, picky about specific things. You know, it's gotta it's gotta fit in this. <laughs> they gotta shove it in one little uh, section. This, this is it, what it is. I understand <laughs> it and now. I may judge it, and it relates to this, and it was born of this, and this is how the structure works. And now it's all like you know. It's 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 really really hard uh, in the world of you know creating now they just call it content. It's not about making music anymore or you know trying to make a movie or a show. It's about okay, I'm producing content now. Let's make this content. And <laughs> who, uh, what what segment does this content appeal to? And what's the next piece of content? And it's like Jesus Christ. Like you know we I don't know exactly how old you are, but you sound mature. At least you're an old soul at the very least. And um, forty four. You know, we. Okay, so there you go. So when you grew up, like a really cool new release of music mattered. It could really affect you deeply. And I think that now we're in this age where, sure, it's amazing that all the tools are there. Like I couldn't have made this album without all the tools being readily available to make music and to distribute music. But at the same time, with so much quote content being made, you're getting flooded by noise and you're missing out on signal. Like it's really, really hard to feel that special connection to something new that comes out it's rare when it does i treasure it still because it's kind of like you know not only do you know how the sausage is made and like the 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 mystery is going but there's just so much it's hard to connect with something that feels like it matters yeah yeah for sure man for sure yeah i know i I, you know it's it's weird like like back back during those times it seemed like uh speaking of the 90s like it seemed like uh, a lot of different things like this were more um, celebrated, but then then again, at the same time, I kind of feel like right now we're sort of moving into a resurgence of a lot of that, where uh, there is still there, there's definitely a, a, a need for this kind of thing out there. You know, there, there's there's definitely an audience that is um, interested in, in in all kinds of different things like this. You know what I mean? Well, I think that that's the, the the one upside of it. I didn't want to be like, yeah, I'm the complaining old guy on my porch and get off my lawn. And this is how you're supposed to listen to music, kids these days. No, it's not that at all. But but I think it's, it is a reflection of culture, but and how fast we're moving and what technology does to us. And and yet at the same time, one of the great things and grand things and beautiful things about the, the modern age uh, is the the true access to like a, the global village. Right? It's like everything is connected and. I I, I released this album and did a little bit of promo in the beginning and I'm seeing these segments bubble up that are intrigued by it or reaching out or, or you know, reposting in places and I'm going, what? Uh, there's a really nice pocket of people in Russia who like this? What? Filipinos are really getting off on this song? What? And, and that's that might not have happened in the past. Um, it was it was it's been really interesting to watch as you know a new video comes out or as the the it gets shared or bubbles up again in in the collective consciousness which parts of the world are resonating with with what um, and at what time that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, you you speaking about technology and the internet and everybody uh, different things connected, but like the way that you were able to do this with different artists and Mm -hmm. uh, the production also is amazing on this. Can you tell us about that? Oh, well, I am very, very blessed. Um, uh, my, my number one main man and uh, producer in a lot of the tracks on the non-hip-hop stuff is my cousin Tobias Tinker, who's been based in Berlin for the last 25 years. He was brought out there way back when to be kind of a music director for a offshoot of Cirque du Soleil, of all things. Um, but he's like an old-school uh, classical and jazz pianist who also used to have like a rock band when he was younger, kind of a, a, a more of a proggy thing. And... Um, we had worked on a couple of projects from a soundtrack perspective because again i used to not only produce games but i also used to i had some pretty big animation projects back in the day uh kind of one that's considered the the granddaddy of animated comics it was called broken saints this uh 10 hour kind of uh sci-fi techno spiritual epic that fox picked up back in 2004 
and then sent made it into a global DVD set for release in 2006 to 2010, <laughs> and it was kind of a thing back then. And um, and and Tobias did the soundtrack for most of the ten hours of the series, and we've just kept working together since on stuff for for movie studios, on indie projects, on game stuff. And uh, I'm like, one of these days, can we like, you know, we really want to, I really want to make an album. And and the genesis of this whole project was me you know falling in love with my son even with the challenges with thailand and with his mom and everything else i wanted to do something special for my boy and i noticed at a very young age during our first trip to germany that um, my son was really responding to music and we're sitting in tobias's flat and uh and he's playing piano on his baby grand piano and my son is just like tapping along to the beat at nine months and i'm going whoa that's interesting and my cousin who's a very you know he'll, he'll joke he's a music snob is like i that's uh, that's quite advanced for that age and um, <laughs> and we end up say, and we end up singing Hey Jude and uh, he's clapping along and then that planted the seeds for the song and the album a little bit Hey Ray and then I'm like oh I want to I want to do something for his first birthday and then for his second birthday and then I realized wait a minute all of these songs are pouring out of me there's something really in there there's a nugget there and I could scratch that itch of this creative a bucket list thing I've wanted to do forever with a real purpose, not just make something that's wank, but like have this project really driven by love. And then our network expanded out because he had people who were itching to work on something because they couldn't perform live because of the pandemic. And so, you know, up steps his buddy, Matt Miller, who's a, a an American guy who lives in Sweden and he's an awesome killer guitarist and indie producer and ex punk head for some really, really cool bands that have toured around the world. And, uh, you know, he helped me crank out dad bod and Shadowland and, um, uh, super boo. And so, and then the hip hop stuff, I always wanted to kind of take my hand at producing that and I knew some loop makers and had some cool samples. And then I just produced it myself and, and it all worked out and it was all because of technology. And as we're all sitting around going, oh shit, we're indoors and needing to find a sense of purpose. Okay. This will do. Wow. Man, that is, that is, <laughs> that is truly amazing, dude. Um, Th uh, thank you. Now, uh, as far as your videos too, you just released a new video. Um, can you tell us yes, about the capper? Can you tell us about that? Like, how'd you go about doing well, that? Well, you know what? I, I'm blessed in that it was uh, a year and a quarter ago, actually a little bit longer, when um, you know pandemic stuff kind of started to lift a little bit. But more importantly, uh, with tourism kind of like dead in in that southeast asia region i was living in um my boy's mom was like i'm gonna go back to germany i'm like well you're not leaving with my boy and she's like well you better find a job nearby then and i'm like oh crap like necessity is the mother of invention and um i i reached out because i hadn't been working in the house i'd had all this freedom to kind of work remotely but now it was like okay i need to find something that suits me that's in house and there were like you know, there was a cool game gig offered in in the uk and there was one in shanghai so that's too far away and there were a couple other things that didn't quite feel right and then it was I, I reached out to this company that was advertising interactive storytellers uh, in in southern Netherlands and they were doing like health tech I'm like what is this and I started talking to them and we had conversations over a couple of months and then they made an offer for like to run their whole kind of narrative division um, and their user experience and I was really getting excited about this app they were working on which is going to be actually coming out now very shortly uh, and focused on like kind of like an interactive coaching experience to help people with their you know mental and and emotional wellness and it's going to be kind of it's going to start in this region like netherlands and germany and belgium and then go global next year and um so i came over here and i get to you know i get to be with my son all the time like he lives the a half an hour train ride away with his mom and we you know split time and um with that came the okay well i had produced all these little videos on on the island i had uh, either used production friends who you know weren't shooting muay thai fighting videos anymore who had done professional stuff for like ufc and one fc and stuff and they're like okay let's let's make some music videos then um but when i came here at the health tech company i worked for they had this incredible media division in-house these really talented young guys who were like making corporate stuff and wanted to do something cool instead and over my first six months there, I guess I kind of proved myself. My boss is like, is there anything you could do that would be like a little bit outside of the box, 
that would showcase like the cool stuff we do here, potentially attract new talent, but also like tell a bit of a story and celebrate our kind of disruptive punkish spirit. And I'm like, actually, I might have something in mind. And uh, I pitched them on doing a music video for the title track as the last big video of the project, Dad Bot. And um, that's what we just released. It was it was you know, shot and edited and, and comped and posted in special effects. And within three weeks, the whole team came together. Artists came and you know, drew custom stuff for it, a, a nod to Calvin and Hobbes and some other like really cool stuff. We did some great 3D scans of my son and I and did some superhero green screen stuff. And it, it, it turned into this little story about a father and son heist where we sneak into this tech company and play around with all their toys and eat their candy treats and uh, flirt with <laughs> the girls who work there and then jump into the green screen room and like have all these superhero adventures and then the the security guy comes in and tries to stop our fun but the you know the power of our awesome father son love uh, we snap our fingers and we get superpowers and fly out of the building into the sky happily ever after sort of deal and it's it's a bit of a blast and it's only been out a few days and people are really really just jumping on top of it it's been a, a wonderful surprise so far i hope it keeps going that is amazing man well i gotta say you are a busy dude is that really is, is, is it is it that busy i like I, it's funny i have friends who are like perennially busy they've got so much stuff on the go it's hustle 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 and here i am in my early 50s i hope all the listeners don't go this guy can't be cool he's in his early 50s i'm, I'm trying man i'm trying i'm young at heart but uh, i don't feel like i'm that busy i feel like i'm a dad and sure i've got this you know this you know pretty cool production job but at the same time it's like if you've got if you're the type with a tendency towards creativity you have the the creative spark you need to express yourself in that way about something that matters it'll happen it has to come out nothing will get in the way of it and it's not it's less about being busy and more about it's a, it's an imperative i had to make this for him it was no less than a calling yeah yeah well you did it man you definitely did it you had a that's why i really hope your listeners appreciate it I think that yeah, so far they're 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 digging the hell out of it, man. Um, for everybody out there listening that's interested, where can they go to find out more information about you? You can okay, well, you can definitely go um, to about this project specifically. You can go to Dad Bod the album. That's like one word, and uh, the background, the project, all the videos, lots of behind the scenes pics and stuff. Uh, of course, you know the projects on Bandcamp, on Spotify, on all the cool places where you listen to on Apple Music, all the cool places you listen to music. Um, if you want to see all the videos and also see a bit more about me and some kind of like background and then some travel stuff i also there were a couple pilots i did for travel channel all of that stuff is up on my youtube channel so that's youtube.com slash broken saint one word broken saint which is a nod to my old handle for my old series and uh otherwise you know broken saint for instagram broken saint for uh for twitter you can uh, hunt me down and do your due diligence and be like okay this this guy's all right he passes the test and um you know maybe join the little tribe we got going really cool man really cool all right well brooke brooke i'm about out of questions for you is there anything else you want to let the people know about no, I just, I just want to say thanks. It's I know, as I said before, it's like we're all competing for people's you know, hearts and minds and ears and eyes, and there's a whole <laughs> lot of noise out there, but this, this signal has a lot of love in it, and uh, even if it sounds cheesy, and I know it would too, if I was listening to this right now, it's like, oh, some, some guy like you know made some like album for his kid, you know, well, how's that going to resonate with me? Um, I think you'll do me a favor and listen to like you know a couple of the tracks if you listen to like a best friend or a dad bob which are super fun or you want to go a little bit darker and go to shadowland or you know some of the cool hip-hop like four and bumpy um or some of the really heart tweaking stuff there was a i'll leave you with this there was there was when it first came out there was a, a really nice uh a, series of reviews that popped up on Bandcamp. Um, a chunk of them from, from Russia and, and Brazil and a few other places. And there was this one guy who wrote, he's like, you know, I'm hard ass. I love like metal and heavy rock and industrial stuff. But this little, this song, Little Guy, which is this kind of like <laughs> very soft, very loving, kind of Disney-esque homage to becoming a dad and all the emotion and weird kind of spiritual stuff attached to it. He's like, this song made me cry and moved me deeper than any of the heavy metal I've been listening to for the last decade. And 
that that was one of the nicest comments anyone made because there there is something there i think that got its way into the project as kind of universal and it's not cliche like this is about love this is about figuring out that there's a love that can be bigger than yourself and whether that's heart-based or you know spirit or whatever religion what do you want to call it um i think that kind of has worked its way into and infused the project and so if you allow yourself to be open you do a, a classic sit down and deep listen if you kind of go from the beginning to the end and set aside an hour hour ish and give it a listen you'll see oh wow there's a method to this madness and shit it can move me and if this guy can if this old weirdo can do it i could do it too <laughs> Hell yeah. That's bro. pretty much it. Hell yeah. All right, man. Zach, thank you. Before I let you go, can I get you to make us a station tag real quick? Oh, damn straight you can. Skinny right. you can. Whenever you're ready, say something like this is Brooke, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. This is Brooke Burgess, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Zach Moonshine is the man. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Do you know what? My pleasure. And the sun is coming up here in the Netherlands across the pond. You have a great night. Kick some ass. And thanks so much for spreading the good word. Thank you, man. We'll talk to you later, brother. <laughs> Be well, brother. All right. Peace. There you have it, folks. Brooke Burgess live on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation fucking radio. Like I said earlier, put your speakers everywhere, man. Make your neighbors fucking hate you. If you don't see U-Haul trucks everywhere tomorrow... I don't know what the fuck is wrong, man. You're not cranking it up loud enough is what the problem is. If that's the case, I don't know. <laughs> Here's some more Brook Burgers for you motherfuckers. Crank it up. Yeah, I got one for you. This man asked me the other day when he finds out I have a kid. What was his first word? What? You want to know my boy's first word? Why is that important to you? And he just smiles, and I'm thinking, man, this cat knows something. And then I'm thinking how my first word, aside from the usual suspects like mama and papa and poo-poo, was toast. Mm-hmm. I had a thing with gluten from the start. That's some foreshadowing and shit. But he goes on to tell me that there's an old wives' tale that says our first word can speak volumes on our true natures. Like a symbol of our connection with the world, a totem of our deepest desire, a manifestation of our higher selves. And then I'm back to thinking about toast. But then I think of my boy. I remember the day he pointed a chubby finger out at the field behind the house at the big orange thing rumbling across that field with its trail of broken earth and smoke. And then he looks up at me, opens that sweet cherub's mouth of his, and makes music. In a single word. My boy is bright, doesn't need to be brighter. My boy is strong, but he don't need to be a fighter. Well, my boy is quick, but he don't need to win the race. My boy is handsome, but not just in his face. He's a giant among you, though he's not that big. He will school you on the trivia from Peppa Pig. He's ahead of the curve, man, ahead of his time. There's not a jungle gym around that he cannot climb. He is clever and defiant and a mischief maker. All the ladies, they will say that he's a future heartbreaker. But there's only one thing that my boy is after because he said his first word and it was tractor tractor T -t -t tractor yeah if I was saving Zelda, I would let him play me. If I were a salmon, I would let him fillet me. If I was on Survivor, I would let him betray me. I would give my last breath for my true love, Raimi. Not a typical boy. He's more than what you think. He's into Muay Thai and monsters and wearing pink. And he's spoken three tongues at the age of two. I heard German, Thai, and English. What's a dad to do? And though his sentences are Asian, his no is nine. And some days he calls me burger. Well, that's just fine. Because his first word real word it came down from the divine god made me a witness and tractor was mine tractor was mine it was mine tractor 
got a compact frame with a sleek form factor. He can climb like a monkey, a banana extractor. No, he ain't a supermodel or a soap opera actor. But he burns like the sun. He's a nuclear reactor. Got all the right angles. Don't need no protractor. Realign my world just like a chiropractor. Bends light to my soul. He's a master refractor. He's a Buddha in training. He's a karmic contractor. Squashes down all my sadness like a garbage compactor. Covers up misdeeds like a corporate redactor. All the numbers move to him, a mathematic attractor. Always down with the rubber trees, a prophylactor. A magnum bob pimp, he's an ice cream exactor. But, But all, all my, my boy, boy wants is a motherfucking tractor. He wants a tractor. Moving in that field, boy. Seeing that machine growl and grind. Leaving its mark deep in the earth. You know what you are? You're an earth shaker. You're a world changer. You're my son. My number one. And now I see your true nature. Driven in diesel and dust. Strong and sure and unstoppable. Cause your first word was tractor. It was tractor. Tractor Tractor
awake in the darkness and I look around there is no sound it's so tranquil it's so calm like you now I hear a noise is there any way out of this nightmare I'm alone now and you're laughing at me but I take life in a way that you could never see so if you're leaving you better let me know cause I've already started my plan and I'm never gonna let you go no to Metal Devastation Radio, where only the strong survive.
Yeah. 
everybody, this is Max Cavalera, and you are listening to Radio Devastation. Oi! <laughs> Wait, I was, it's Metal Devastation, right? Yeah, Metal Devastation yeah, let Radio. Again. Let me do it again, let me do it again. All right. What's up, Metalheads? This is Max Cavalera. You are listening to Metal Devastation! Stay brutal. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Love it, dude. All right. right on, man. Nice talking to you, brother. Hey. I hope I'll see you. Absolutely, man. I'll be there, dude. Ready to bang my head. All right. All right. Take care, man. All right. Later. Cheers.